Worst date I've ever had. Booze, drugs, blood and an ahem accident. NSFW. Long read, but worth it. So, this all happened a few years ago. I met a guy through mutual friends while I was out drinking one night. For the purpose of this story, let's call him Jim. That night me and Jim got on like a house on fire, had a great laugh, exchanged numbers and even had a bit of a kiss at the end of the night. We agreed to meet up a few days later for coffee, which came and passed without issue. We had a lovely time. Over the next few weeks we had a few back quote day dates, and although I enjoyed his company and always had fun, there was something in the back of my mind that kept telling me something isn't quite right here. For example, he was quite forgetful, he quite often had to think hard about what my name was before saying it. Or, if we'd arranged to meet, he'd text slash call 6 or 7 times beforehand saying, so we are meeting today at 1pm yeah, almost like it was the first time he'd asked it every time. I mentioned it in passing to the friend that had initially introduced us, she then came out with oh yeah, I didn't tell you did I Jim was in a massive car accident a few years ago. He was in a coma for a while. Had to learn to walk slash talk slash drive slash do everything again. He was quite seriously brain damaged but he seems okay now right? I agree that apart from the forgetfulness, I'd not seen anything that had caused me any concern. Next time I spoke to him, I mentioned that I knew, and we just went from there. At this stage we'd had 3 or 4 dates, I liked him, and we'd got to the point where we wanted to spend some proper back quote alone time together. He'd been living with his parents since his accident, and I still lived at home, so we didn't have much opportunity for privacy. We decided that we'd book a hotel for the night one Saturday night. So the night came around, we decided that we'd have a few drinks in the room then head into the town center for a few more drinks. He'd brought a couple of bottles of red wine, which I declined. He got stuck in nonetheless, and as things got a bit steamy, I didn't realize just how quickly this wine was going down. By the time we were ready to head into town, no two ways about it, he was hammered. I discovered afterwards that due to the brain injuries he sustained in his car crash, he was not meant to drink anything at all. A few sips of wine to him were the equivalent to a whole bottle for someone else. I tried to persuade him that going to town and drinking more was not the sensible thing to do, but he wasn't having any of it. On the walk into town, he behaved like a total liability, shouting loudly at other pedestrians, shouting loudly at me, I had to stop him from hugging people on the street etc. I was mortified. We were turned away from pretty much every bar we went to in town, made all the more mortifying by the fact it was only about 7.30pm. After half an hour or so, I gave up and said we should go back to the hotel. But, as we were walking we passed another bar, he decided we should go in as his friend was probably aging, and reluctantly I agreed. This bar has a reputation in our town of being a bit of a drugs den. It's always playing heavy house music at massive volume, really not my thing at all. Miraculously we weren't turned away, and then he ordered the biggest bottle of champagne behind the bar. We went and sat on a sofa for a few minutes then he told me he was going to find his friend. I sat on the sofa alone, for nearly half an hour, just the bottle of champagne for company, not so bad I suppose, feeling totally out of my comfort zone. When he eventually returned, he sat next to me and said here, have this, whilst pressing an ecstasy tablet into my hand, and then he wandered off again. I considered throwing it on the floor, or giving it to someone else, but I thought what the hell, I might as well try, and salvage some fun out of the night. Things can't get much worse can they oh how wrong I was. After another 40 minutes or so, still sitting alone, Jim came back again. I was feeling good by now, about ready for a dance. He said I think these pills are shit I took 6 of them, and I don't feel anything. At that moment, any good feeling I had drained away completely 6 pills. This was not going to go well. Feeling pretty sober, I decided it was time for us to leave. Although Jim claimed that the ecstasy wasn't affecting him at all, his mannerism suggested otherwise. He was shaking all over, gurning like nobody's business, and could barely string a sentence together. We started the walk back to the hotel. As we were walking along the high street, he decided that he needed to pee. He went off down a side street, and I told him I'd wait at the top of the road. I waited. After 15 minutes he still hadn't come back. 
So, I started walking down the side street he'd gone down, looking for him. I found him about halfway down, trousers undone, shoes missing, face absolutely covered in blood. My first thought was that someone had attacked him but I eventually got out of him that he'd lost his balance while peeing and smashed his face against a wall. There was also a certain aroma about him. Yep, he'd shit himself. I found his shoes a bit further down the road, wiped as much of the blood off his face with my jumper as I could, and set about carrying him to get some help. In our town, there's a volunteer ambulance service called the SOS Bus, parked on the high street every Friday slash Saturday night. They help hammered people with water, help them if they are hurt, or to smash to get home. At the SOS bus, one of the nurses cleans up the cut on his face. She could clearly smell that he'd crapped his pants too, and keeps asking have you, um hit an accident love, to which his only reply was yeah I hid my face. We eventually got clearance to leave, got in a taxi back to the hotel. As soon as we got back, he locked himself in the bathroom and refused to come out for a good hour and a half. All the while I can hear water running and him shouting from inside. At one point he did open the door, completely naked, covered in blood again, in his supremely wrecked state he'd slipped, and hit his head again, which I then had to clean up, trying to avoid his shit stained pants and trousers he'd left on the floor. The rest of the night was spent with me curled up in a corner of the bed, fully clothed, and him switching between trying to have sex with me again, and walking around the room trying not to be sick. In the morning, I woke him up early, and said that we had to leave. He claimed, or at least tried to claim, I don't know, if he was just trying to save face, that he had no recollection of what had happened the night before, and kept asking me what I'd done to his face, and why his clothes were dirty. I'd reached the end of my rope by that point, and asked him to just drive me home. We drove in silence for a few minutes, before he said actually, I'm just going to drop you off here. Your house isn't on my way home, so it's out of my way, at which point he pulled into the car park of a local supermarket. I said nothing as I got out of the car. He pulled away pretty quickly as well. I had to get a taxi home from the car park of a supermarket. If you ask me, that was the final kick in the teeth. I only heard from him a few times after that. I had a few angry phone calls from him claiming that I'd forced the drink and drugs on him and that the huge cut on his head was my fault. Then a number of angry texts asking why I told everyone he'd done all those drugs. I actually only told a few of his close friends, as the whole thing was pretty concerning. After that I cut all contact and haven't spoken to Jim since. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that bell to turn on notifications, so you'll be sure to know when the next video comes out. Want to watch some more? Check out my other videos. I really do appreciate everyone who helps make these videos possible. And as always, thanks for watching.